recording. And we will be going live in five, four, three, two, we're live. Good morning, Owasso. This is the Twins with Owasso Live, and this is the Morning Loop. It's currently 8 a.m. like normal. It is 71 degrees outside, so it is nice and warm out. It is, we got a high of 90 degrees today. It's going to be a little windy. We actually had some pretty heavy storms this morning. It kept me up or woke me up a couple of times last night. I mean, it was going on from like 2 to at least 6.30-ish. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, not fun. Thank goodness no. Well, I guess there were tornadoes in southern Oklahoma. There definitely were some tornadoes in Reno and uh, Mustang. So, I don't know much about the uh, damage or the extent of the damage. I just saw some Facebook posts this morning about it. So, uh, thoughts and prayers got the people down there They were that were affected by it. Hopefully no real injuries were had. Um, however, again, it's... Uh, some pretty rough weather we had last night, but it's looking real pretty this morning. It looks like it's going to be a pretty nice week all week as well, so good for us. Traffic conditions going into Tulsa are pretty fair right now. It was pretty much standstill about 20 minutes ago, yeah. but it has cleared up, so if you have not left yet and you're getting ready to commute into Tulsa, it's looking pretty good for you. Now, as far as upcoming events go, what do we got coming up, Chad? Well, according to what I'm seeing here on... The Owasoisms page. I say that. It'll pull back up for me. There we go. All right. So on Owasoisms, we have a flag laying ceremony for the veterans of foreign war. Okay. And that is at 4 p.m. on the 23rd. And that is at Owasso Fairview Cemetery. Uh, and then we have uh, the St. Henry's Community Meals on the 23rd as well. And then on the 25th, we have the Farmers and Artisans Market at the Red Bud Festival Park. Cool. And that's really don't have much left on the Owasoisms. For that week. Till, yeah, for the rest of that week. But, yeah, it's pretty scarce on the Owasoisms page. We'll check out uh, the Owasso Chamber of Commerce, which I have here. And it's showing... May Leadership Owasso on the 21st, and then Pastries and Perks on the 22nd. Okay. And that's really all we got this week. Nice. Good deal. So it's a light week as far as events go, so I imagine people are still doing uh, post-graduation uh, parties for high school and oh, yeah. things like that, so I imagine this is not a good week for any anybody, really, especially mm -hmm. if you have high school kids, or even kids that are, I mean, every kid, really, because you're trying to figure out what to do with them for summertime. Yep, and then the only other last thing I have is, unfortunately, our Thunder lost to the Mavericks by one point the other, that the last series, so we're out, so Thunder, we're not taking it this year. Yep, we're like the Dallas Cowboys, like, this is our year! <laughs> Pretty much, that's what it feels like right now, anyway. Hey, but that's, I mean, that's, it'll be a good thing for next year. Like I said, they just, if we can keep the same team together and they can keep that, you know, camaraderie up, but also just be able to pull through and get better at shooting and, <sighs> excuse me, get a strategy working that we can actually come out on top next year. That would be great. So, with that being said, we're going to move on to more... Oh, I guess local news. So, I remember we actually made a post about this, and so did Owasoisms a while back. But if you remember, we were talking about the uh, the guy that was a car thief, and he was running around out in the woods. Well, apparently they found him. They captured him outside of a, a pawn shop the day after he was running around out in the field. It's not playing audio, okay. so you can keep talking. So, uh, they, caught, they caught the guy outside of a pawn shop, and apparently he was... Uh, like, he was not, like, your garden variety, like, criminal. It was not, like, a first-time offense. He was a repeat offender, and he had been doing this stuff for years. It turns out he might have stolen around $17 million in vehicles in his uh, career, his tenure as a criminal. So, that's pretty astounding. That that's the, I mean, you know, he didn't go away with $17 million, though. He stole $17 million worth of stuff. Now, what he got, to, now, whatever he made on the turnaround on that was probably significantly less, probably 10, per, you know, a lot like sales. He probably made 10% of that 14 million, if that. So, or 17 million, excuse me. But again, that goes to show you that, uh, you know, the, the police did have a plan. They kind of had a, an idea of how they were going to follow and track this guy. It's a shame that they didn't stick out there and find him out in the fields. I know that's what the Owasso PD was hoping for, but, uh, you know, 
that the Tulsa PD clearly had a plan, and they kind of knew his uh, his route of travel. And if they had captured his associates, they they'd have been really good people to uh, interrogate and be like, okay, where would you have gone if it was you out there? And uh, that's you know, a good way to go about it instead of wasting your time walking around out in the woods. So they caught this fella, and that is a good thing. Yeah, Randall Liggins. Randall Liggins. And that's a different one. Sorry about that, but we'll go back to <laughs> you. There we go. Standoff. Anyway, yeah, that's a different video. They, they they just start immediately playing another thing. Yeah, I got you. No worries. But yeah, so that's what you got. So we got this Randall Liggins guy, and he got caught. So that's good news for us. So there was no reason for anybody in the uh, Owasso area to kind of fret and. You know, he, uh, I guess he vacated the premises as quickly as he could and fled back somewhere into Tulsa is where he was caught, near Memorial, I believe, some pawn shop near Memorial. So, that being said, uh, oh, are you still showing? Well, this is just the live feed that they had out there. So, you can see it's clearly by 86th Street coming down uh, towards, uh, you know, Mingo, yeah. 97th. Yeah, he's out there in that field. That is not where he would have been. <laughs> yeah. I guess he could have been walking that direction, but... That is not where he would have been. Mm -hmm. But this is basically where we were the other day. Whenever this, yeah, was we were off. significantly further out in those woods, though. Yep. But that's really it. I just wanted to show that the guy was caught. Said a Randall Liggins, and that's really all we had with that. I just wanted to follow up with that that he had been caught and had been dealt with with like what, like you said, like seventeen million dollars worth of stolen vehicles. Good lord, that's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. So. We'll go ahead and push on to the primary focus of our subject today, which is DEI, the scam of DEI. So there, there are two trains of thoughts on this, or at least the two primary arguments is DEI is bad, which that's where I line up on. DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion is bad. It does not make for a better society. What DEI does is it allows for less qualified people to take jobs or it creates jobs that don't really need to exist in a field. So a lot of people who will make the case for DEI will say, this is just making sure that people of color get their, their fair shake in the world. It's like, you already have that. I mean, Reagan passed the equal pay law back in the 80s, for God's sakes. And the most important thing about this DEI thing is we don't want, like, look, there are people of color who probably qualify to do the job, but the problem is companies want to hire the best person for that job. It doesn't matter what skin color that person is. If the, if the, color, if the skin color of that person is white, if it's black, if it's an Asian person, if it's a Middle Eastern person, it doesn't matter. We want the most qualified person for the job so they can do the best job doing that thing, especially when it comes to things like this is why the airlines are hurting right now. Like DEI is affecting the airlines horribly right now. So that's why you will question. You'll turn your head whenever you see a person of color in there. You don't want to be that person of color that's like, did you get here because you're the best person for the job or because of the DEI quota? That should bother you, especially if you're a person of color. But they people just they go, this is what it needs to be. And then again... The other argument is, like in the school systems, when people want to rip it out of school systems, they go, DEI in school. It's like, they don't want us to teach black history anymore. They don't want us to teach the Civil War. It's like, what are you talking about? I was in school before this DEI crap was around. They taught us about the Civil War. Did they teach you every single detail about the Civil War? No. But they don't have time to. You can't go into every single battle. You can't go into every single... Uh, philosophy of every person that was out there fighting for whatever reason but that's what they do they go you just want to you just want to erase history it's like no we don't like you're really straw manning the other side's argument so and why don't you pull up that video of the uh the ou the OU, sorry i know you have that other one you have the picture of this chick pulled up. we'll talk about her in just a second yes second. but yeah that, But yeah, so apparently, uh, oh, how long ago was it, Chad? It was like, what, five months ago? I believe so. The governor signed a, a law here in Oklahoma saying that they did not want 
DEI to be a part of the curriculum in the state, you know, and of course I, that's where all this, you know, it's like, oh, they don't want, they don't want to educate our kids. It's like, that's not what that is. They're saying they don't want white guilt being a part of the curriculum. They don't want you to be like, all white people are bad because of this. It's racial discrimination again, but it's saying, hey, all white people are collectively evil for doing this. It's like, that's not a healthy way to teach our society about history. All right, I've got it pulled up whenever you're ready. Yeah, go ahead, play it. Students are suing the University of Oklahoma, claiming discrimination because of the color of their skin. They're white. So these three OU students filed the lawsuit in federal court saying they missed out on scholarship opportunities because of the color of their skin. One claims an admissions counselor told her financial aid would not be available to her, but would have been available to an African American. So they filed this lawsuit today in federal court. They are seeking to be paid back what they believe to be owed on those scholarships. OU has not commented on this lawsuit. Of course they're not. Yeah. Are... So this is the truth of the matter, folks. I guarantee you those kids sat down with the counselor, or admissions counselor, or somebody and were like, hey, I need scholarships so I can, you know, afford tuition here. And they were like, well, you don't qualify because this is this. OU is going to have some major corrective training done for those uh, those counselors. And I'm like, yeah, you're not allowed to say this kind of stuff anymore because we don't want to be sued like this again for racial discrimination. Now, what they're going to try to argue in court is that you can't be, you know, it's, it's the same argument they're going to, they've been making for the last couple of years. It's not a strong argument, but it's an argument that has been set in precedent. It's like you can't be, you can't racially discriminate against white people because they're the majority of the population. That might work in the court of law, but, you know, I'm hoping it doesn't because it's not a strong argument. It's not a mar argument from principle either. So I'm betting these kids will probably come out on top more than likely. They, or they'll settle and take some type of, you know, the, the, it won't go to court, but they will settle and OU will settle this out of school. Out of court, out of pocket, out of pocket too. I mean, they they got, they're not hurting for cash, so that's what's going to happen here. These kids are going to walk away with maybe not as much money as they thought, but they will probably walk out on top with some decent change in their pocket. So again, this is why racial quotas, racial discrimination based on DEI is not going to work out for the long run for this stuff because you will have people who can come in and make the flip side of this argument. Like, well, now you're discriminating against the... Sure, the majority of, like, what, 60% of people in the United States are white, but you're also denying scholarships based on the color of skin because, well, we have to have this many people of color come through. Yep. And not to mention is college is basically turning into a scam. Yeah, unless you're in the STEM fields, it's borderline worthless anymore yeah said so doctor said so, so you have to be in the medical field so doctor lawyer or engineer mm -hmm. are the only three that are actually probably worth their salt anymore yeah and i'm not saying that that college wasn't good back in the day for other fields but it's definitely not anymore i mean all you're doing is throwing yourself into hundreds of thousands that you know thousands of dollars worth of debt for a degree that you don't really need that you can just get on the job training for in most things. I mean, one of the most useless degrees that I honestly, I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody, but teaching, I mean, why on earth do you need to go to college to get a teaching degree? Yeah. Well, why do you need to go to college to get a business degree? I mean, most of the people, most of the most successful business owners were college dropouts. Yep. They left and like, I'm just going to go start my business. I mean, the guys that started Canes, like they famously say that their teacher gave them a C on their business proposal for the creation of their company. You, here's you got to see it's not good enough it's like okay well apparently it's good enough in practice so yeah well, it's also going to show you that sometimes professors don't know what the heck they're talking about yeah well they don't have to provide anything they don't have to you know it's like in ghostbusters you know it's like we didn't have to produce anything when we worked in the college we didn't have you know <laughs> we are you've i've worked the private sector they expect, they expect results. results you know you don't have to produce anything at the college level so that's the truth, you know. I mean, again, if you're going to law school or you're going to be a doctor or you're going to be an engineer, those are the jobs that you need to go to college for and get some training for. If you're, especially if you're going to go work your way up in that field, but yeah, no, this is this whole DEI thing, it's ridiculous and the fact that these kids will probably end up winning. Speaking of DEI, we'll go back to the picture of that chick, you know, it's like 
DEI is a scam. Diversity, equity, and inclusion, it's a scam. And they have all these people come in and give seminars and talks about how people of color will affect the work environment. How you need to be aware of your racial biases. And it turns out all these people are grifters. They're getting paid seven, or excuse me, six-figure salaries or seven-figure salaries to teach people that racism is bad. Like, are you kidding me? Like, why does anyone need to teach that? But who is this chick, Chad? What's her name? She just she just scammed Facebook and Nike out of five million dollars. Give me one second. I'll pull it up. Yeah, quick, I have the video pulled up. If you want me to do yeah, that. go ahead and pull that up. Yeah. All right, can do. Boom. Let's pull it up. Multi screen. Yeah, this is insane. Like again, this is how you know it's a grift. It's not real, and this is why like the, you want to be on the cutting edge of new businesses because you can scam so many people with new business ideas. You know, this is a cultural Marxist idea, this DEI stuff. And they're coming in going, if you don't, it's a lot like what we were talking about with feminist frequency and all those, you know, feminist, uh, yeah. what was the a real nice company you have there. It'd be a shame if, if we accused you of, of sexism or racism. Exactly. And now that's what they're doing with this. That's what DEI is. We're going to accuse you of, of sexism, racism, and you have to, and in order for your employees to stay qualified to do their job, it's a lot like in college where they say, if you're a male, you have to take a sexual assault course and you have to take a racial awareness course before you can schedule and sign up for the next semester. That's what this is, except it's at the corporate level. It's like, hey, you want to work at Facebook? Well, you're going to have to sit in in this seminar where they teach you about racial bias training mm -hmm. and how you're all unconsciously racist. You just don't know it. Okay. I'm ready. Got the video yeah, queued up. Hold up. up play it. Ready. All right. Playing now. This morning, a Georgia woman, she's waiting to be sentenced after she pleaded guilty to stealing more than $4 million from Facebook where she worked as an executive, according to the U.S. attorney, Barbara Smiles. Barbara made Smiles. Inflated in invoices She's not to smiling pay now. for, quote, a lavish lifestyle. This includes babysitters, preschool tuition, and hairstyles. Her sentencing is in March. There you go. That was $4 million from Facebook, and she was working away at Nike. She had, you know, got done working over there at Facebook and started up her same program over there at Nike. And again... How many people did she indoctrinate? How much BS did she put out there in the ether to all these darn employees that had to sit there through it? This is how you indoctrinate in generations of people. People who don't really understand what she's talking about or are not really part of this Marxist zeitgeist will just be like, oh, wow, I never thought, I never knew that before. Now, if you have a functioning brain and you actually think about stuff, you'd be like, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But... If they're putting this in at the corporate level and you're just a drone that works there and you're like, oh, okay, whatever. Most people just sit there and just like mute it and listen to something on their earbuds. But for the people who are there that like might actually not know anything about this and start believing, hey, this is going to indoctrinate a lot of people. And again, she got paid $5 million to do basically a seminar about how you are racist, you're a bad person. I mean, pay me that money. Shoot, I'll go in and do that. But yeah, this is this is where we're at. And again, these companies, especially these giant corporations, they're so eager to, to enforce these kind of policies and programs because they don't want to look racist. They want to say that we're on the right side of history. Even though they don't do any investigations. They don't do any critical thinking about these ideas that these people are putting out and it makes you wonder why facebook didn't call nike and let them know about this lady well, it's because, almost like it's like they didn't want to be the only fools that were in the <laughs> well it's because facebook is totally bought into this crap i mean facebook is the one of the most censorious outlets so it's tiktok censors right-wing stuff facebook instagram i mean you and myself, I mean, you, you've experienced the, the egregious censorship of Facebook. Oh, yes. I definitely have. It was the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. Was I was just commenting, like, it was during, it was probably around the 2016 era, and I was just commenting on, I, it wasn't even about, like, Donald Trump or anything. It was just we were having a conversation, and 
the vowels on my keyboard stopped working on Facebook. And I know that it was just Facebook because when I would go to Google or any other website, everything worked just fine. So basically how I did a little hack to get around it is I just pulled up Word and copy and paste because it yeah. couldn't, it's copy and paste still worked. But for whatever reason, my vowels weren't working on Facebook. Yeah. I mean, this, that is the level of what people at, uh, again, not the higher ups, not the people at the top, but it will be the, the moderators, the Facebook moderators, people that get paid an average wage to do, to censor people that they don't politically agree with. Again, it's Big Brother Syndrome, except the, the person who it is, you know, it's some blue-haired feminist sitting there in the, on the other end of the keyboard going, he can't say that. And they block you from being able to type vowels. So you look like an incoherent, crazy person when you try to have a conversation with somebody on Facebook. So that's, that's wild. And again, you know the reason she went to Nike, too. Nike knows who their, uh, their demographic is. Nike t specifically targets the black community. They know that the vast majority of their sales come from certain that certain community. So they're going to get people like her on there, and they're going they're going to get their entire company on board because they know who their market is. Their market's not the the okay. suburban person like you or I. Yeah, it's I mean, urban. What is Nike? It's the urban black community. Who is Nike known for? Michael Jordan. Yeah. I mean, Jordans. I mean, Nike, that is who Nike is. This goes to show you it's it is the the downfall of the African American community, especially in these urban areas, you know. People will waste their welfare checks so they can get their kids new Jordans so they can go to school and not get picked on and bullied. There is a culture of I don't know. It's it's a very odd culture of bullying and style and fashion in the black community and they will pick on and bully kids for or, or like i said once the kid who's poor and not really that cool they'll just steal them from him he'll get the jordans and be like i, I did it I, I got my jordans it's like now nah, they beat him up they took the shoes sell them on the marketplace there is a a bad culture inside of that community and it has to be called out and rooted out by the, the community themselves and again this type of stuff this dei stuff encourages all that bad behavior encourages it because they go we don't have to take responsibility we can just blame white people yeah because they don't want these dei programs put in and again they will straw man our arguments and say you just don't want history taught the way history should be taught no no History has been taught the same for a very long time. And it's always through an apologist perspective from minority communities in this country. Always. Mm -hmm. Well, they said that there was the... I forget what it was, but the, Matt Damon mentions it in uh, whatever that movie Good is. Goodwill Hunting. Goodwill Hunting. I forget what the name is. I'll have to look it up. But I think it's Weathers or something like that, but... The whole apologist thing didn't come yeah, until the 1920s. Yeah, it's the American apologist version of history. Yep. Because the winner, you know, the winner was not wrote as a bad guy up until that point. Yeah. They they uh, wrote America as the invaders instead of as the the conquerors of the plains, the conquerors of the American wilderness. So, yeah. Told from the perspective of the Native Americans, told from the perspective of you know, everyone else other than the Americans making us look like the evil conquerors coming through. So that's kind of the way history's been taught for a long time. But now you've got these other DEI. And again, so that horrible teaching has bred into this cultural Marxist idea where you have people like this now making $5 million a year. Or, I mean, again, you saw it. So she could live a lavish lifestyle. In big cities, five million dollars embezzled, four million from Facebook, and then another million from Nike. Must be easy to sit there and just have a seminar, talk about, hey, you're a bad person, and with my five-step program, I can teach you how not to be a, a bad person, and it's required too by your company. Like you have to sit here and listen to this. You don't have a choice. 
or you will be let go. Yeah. You don't fit the uh, community guidelines for our company. Again, same goes for college. Young men and children at college or kids at college, if you want to go here, you have to. Again, th they had this going on whenever I was there in college. They had the, uh, you have to take the sexual assault and awareness training before you could sign up. And I'm sure now they've got that double twice as much on top of this, you know, DEI, racial bias conscious training before you sign up for your classes next year. And kids just do it so they can go and get their darn grades done. And then again, they only have to brainwash a small percentage of the ones that sign up for them and go, oh, I believe all this. This is great. This information is so good. And that's why you have all these kids who are protesting for Palestine. Why you have all these kids who are protesting with BLM. It's like, regardless of whether or not they understand the movement and the horrible things that the movement's a part of, they're willingly diving in because... They don't care because they've been brainwashed. It's almost as if that they want to find those kids that are willing to buy into all this because they know that that's their, that's their bread and butter right there. Yeah, everybody wants to be on the right side of history. They all want to be a part of a movement. And again, those kids that are a part of the pro-Palestine or pro-DEI or pro-BLM stuff, they are filling the God gap. They're filling that hole that they're missing in their life that was left there by religion or a lack thereof, and they're filling it with this social justice stuff because it's their righteous indignation. And if you don't believe in religion, then it's a purpose. They're filling these causes with a purpose because they have no purpose in life. Yeah. So say with God, your purpose your objective in life, they don't have one, so they fill their life with all these causes mm -hmm. that they really don't believe in or fully understand. I mean, seeing all the interviews with those kids is they clearly don't understand anything about... Yeah, why are we protesting? Why, why are we protesting uh, uh, New York University? What did they do? Uh, and they're like, I, I don't know. We're just out here protesting because a friend called me. There you go. There you go. They don't understand why they're out there. I mean, that was a video from those girls at the New York uh, protest. Just they had no clue why they were there. They were just there because one of their friends called them. And again, this DEI stuff is just that at the corporate level, except it's a scam. And it's a scam that the corporations are taking away bonuses and, and things like that that they could be paying out to their employees to pay $5 million to this lady who's teaching you how not to be a racist. How ridiculous is that? Your, your pay cuts come courtesy of this woman scamming these companies out of $5 million. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. That's money that could be going into the workers' pockets. But instead they go, nope, nope, nope. We need to make sure our workers understand their racial bias. That's really going to help them sell more cheeseburgers or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. <laughs> And again, it, it just, it's so ridiculous that this is the level. This is where we're at right now because Pete, the, the most scary thing you can be called in this society is a racist. And there's no defense for it either. Like, somebody accused me right now, you're just a racist. It's like, well, it's, the, they act like the onerous is on me to prove that I'm not a racist. It's like, no, the onerous is on you. And they'll just go, due to what you said, you just don't care about DEI. It's like, no, I, I care about the content of people's character. I care about what they can produce in society. Best person gets the job, period. So, that's about all we've got for you today. Uh, this stuff kind of gets me worked up, so... Sorry, I know we ran a little bit long, but uh, that that's where we're at in society, folks. We just need to not worry about this kind of crap and just let our actions speak for themselves. Well, that's all we got for you. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. This is the Twins with Owasso Live. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you too can stay in the loop and you can help us grow our channel and grow our, our content creation yeah. here. Yeah. Share us with your friends. Like I said, we're Owasso, we're Owasso's first <laughs> news, program. news program, basically. Yeah. So God bless you all. We're signing off. See you later, everybody.